Hey guys, me again, Rudy Herrera. Um, today, we're gonna work on our cover, right? It's it's real basic. I want to show you uh, everything up to this point you've done has been harder than what you're gonna do right now, right? This is kind of I like to save this towards the end because I kind of you know wrap this up. This is like a little reward to myself whenever I do this kind of stuff, right? Because now you know the whole story is fleshed out. You can, you know, a little uh, Easter egg you want to put in the cover or whatnot. Uh, for my covers, I'm thinking since this is so high energy on the inside, I kind of want to make mine uh, really bold, right? I'm, I'm trying to keep mine mysterious. Uh, that way you open it up. Because I think if you open mine up, you'll get hooked, right? You'll be kind of interested. So I'm, I'm going with a pretty basic design. It's pretty much just letters and decided on the name of this one is going to be called mm, 210 cop stories right so I sketched out some stuff the other day and I'm gonna show you that but I'm gonna run through this real quick show you your materials because I'm gonna I'm gonna run through it the way you can run through it if you want in your kit you got one of these right I got this since mine is gonna be pretty basic I don't need all the colors that this one has to offer, right? I'm pretty much going to use reds and, and blacks and stuff like that. Got this bad boy. And my little kid, I had to screw it together. I got water in here. As you can see. Squeeze it. Same thing like, uh, you'll notice that it's the same tip as, um, as the brush tip we've been using. So, you know, push your liquid down the little fountain until your nib gets completely saturated. And uh, it's ready to paint, right? And I'm gonna explain to you this part. So this part, you know, there's different wells. Here's your different mixes. You can, uh, you know, if you want to get a little bit of, you know, your yellow right here. See, I'm getting it saturated. Got some on my tip. You want to squeeze some out right here and keep that there. All right, and that'll be your yellow wash. Your, uh, you know, your yellows. If you need it to be a little darker, you can go straight to it. See? And then, when you get to right here, this sponge is for cleaning. So now I'm gonna work with a different color. So I just kinda press through, kinda flush it out, clean my brush. See it run, you know, clear. And you're good to go. You're good for your next color. This one, gonna be red. Another technique is you want to kind of thin it out. You're just working on a, a shading of that color, you know, just come back, come back over with white. And drag that out. If you need it darker, you just let the pigment sit like that, let it rest. Here, blend your color. See that? So there's some things you could do. I'll show you in a bigger, I'll show you in a bigger space, right? Like that, maybe it's red again. And of course, obviously, you know, if you're trying to let this color sit, you're gonna have to, uh, <clears throat> you know. If you got a lot of stuff going on, you're gonna juggle around your paper. So you know, don't work this area too much if it's too wet. You know, move around. 
give it some give it some time to uh, to dry. That way you're not oversaturating one side of the of the paper, and if you got a lot of colors going on, they're not bleeding into different things, right? So let me just clean this out real quick, and I'll show you your kit. It's pretty much the same thing, a little nicer, more colors, but for what I'm thinking about this this cover. Uh, this little one is, is going to be good for what I got, right? So, put that right there. This one's yours. I'm just going to run through real quick how to, you know, this one, yours comes pre-assembled. You're going to unscrew this. Run underneath the faucet, a little drip. Give it a squeeze, let it go. It'll suck it all in, fill it up. You don't need too much. And same thing. Give it a few squeezes, let it saturate. You'll see when you get this, this is stiff. It'll get, it'll loosen up once it's wet. Here's your little well. Here's a nicer sponge, but it's the same thing. It's too clean, you know. But yeah, there's your colors. See, you got a little bit more. This one too also has bigger, bigger spots for your washes. And you know, you could use anything else too. You know, you got uh, a little scrap cups, whatever anything that'll hold water and that's your setup right <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you what I ran through the other day I'm gonna do it again but I'm gonna show you the ideas I got working with this is the cool fun part right so here's one idea I'm thinking when you look at this I want you to kind of be curious as to what's inside so here's the title of my of my comics it's called two and old stories I'm just gonna put it real big hopefully it uh, makes you curious makes you want to open it up and see what's going on and here's another variant I came up with where it's basically uh, our main character he's got hands and guns coming out of his eyeballs and mouth right super aggressive real loud real noisy uh, a hard guitar solo Nani? and uh, I was like, well, that's, that's a lot, right? That, that could be off-putting. Maybe. I would think that was cool, but... I was like, let's just go with this. Right? And the cool thing about this, too, is, you know, I was really kind of torn between these, but, you know, one thing me and my friends used to do back in the day was, you know, if I had this idea, I would tell, I would tell my homie, you know, hey, Slim, why don't you draw this for me? Draw this idea, but, you know, however you do it. And, you know... That was a variant. That happens a lot in the comic world, right? So think about that. If you got a friend, you know, you'd like them to get involved or something, it might be a cool idea to ask them, hey, you know, maybe draw mine, I'll draw yours. We have different variants or something, you know? A special edition, that one, you know? So this is pretty much my sketch. I'm gonna run through it again, uh, color it and ink, in, and ink it, just so you could see um, what I end up with, right? Show you how to work on that watercolor paper. Uh, how to use this little pen and how I'm gonna basically the way you should run through it. So there we go. So you can work with it on the block. In this case, I'm gonna work with it off the block. What I like to do sometimes, if I can, if I'm working on a piece, is I'll, I'll tape it down to the table. But in this case, I might need to move it around since I'm doing it quickly. So I'm just gonna let it, let it loose, right? Maybe I could pick it up and fan it if I need to. So let's go through it, right? And again, you know, you're working in a smaller format. Yours is essentially this folded in half, but for the sake of just seeing this, I'm gonna work on this size. Uh, the first thing I always do is I'll lay it out, right? One of the fun things I like to do is I'll put my little square right here for, uh, you know, my publishing logo and whatnot, uh, volume of comic that right you, you've ever seen it that's the that's the little square right here on on the upper left 
and uh, the one that me and a couple fellow artists came up with was uh, here at Sokka at another comic workshop was uh, Death Hand Comics, All right? So I'm gonna keep that right here and keep my, just kind of put in some stuff to place hold and I'll finish later, right? So I'm not gonna finish the detail on that. Right now I'm gonna put my big old 210 stories. I think I'm gonna get rid of the the eyes right here. Right here I had some eyes. I think that kind of detracts. Maybe I could put this two right here. Move the cop right here. Maybe my cop is bigger now. Same sizing. It's kind of a funny rhythm right here, right? So I think I'm gonna do that. Now, what I'm gonna do is, on this one, I'd recommend working it the same way you did you would with your line work, right? Uh, as I showed you in a different video. Go over it with your, your biggest micron, your eight, and then, and then you would color it, and then if you need wider lines, do it with this one. Um, the brush pen that's in your pack right now, if you, well basically, these they're meant to be waterproof but I've noticed that if you get you know to an extent you can't really soak your whole paper so in this case when you're working with watercolors if you're not super comfortable and you're and you're uh, you're a little bit more heavy-handed than <clears throat> than you expect you can get some blurry lines towards the end of this one but these ones these microns they're pretty uh, they're proven we can wash over these and uh, they'll be good so we're gonna use this as our skeleton for everything we got going on. So here we go.
of my lines down right, everything as far as the letters. Mm, I gotta figure out the Death Hand logo right here. That'll give me enough time to let this dry. That way I can go over and hit this with an eraser. You wanna get as much pencil lines up, you know, if you're trying to get something super clean because the next step here is the watercolor. And if there's pencil lines underneath that, then, uh, you know, they're gonna stay there. So, I'm gonna do that. Figure out my little Death Hand logo. Then I'll ink that in, and then I'll erase. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Check it out, this is what we got, right? Just cleaned it up. So now, a little correction, little corrections I need to make. Just unlike my lines, some of my lines to touch all the way. That's what I was going for, right? Stuff right here, little things that bother me. There you go, looks good, looks good. Look at this guy, this guy needs to touch. Mm, where else? Over here. Yeah, yeah looks good. There's something right here. Mm, Alright, I like that. Oh, so now I get to play with these colors. well so maybe it's another way for me to wash out all right all right so first I think I'm gonna work from top to bottom oh actually um, look at that got my hands all dirty just from one little bit of a little bit of penciling make sure your hands are clean you don't smear your pencil all over the place. Alright, alright. Alright. Clean or cleaner. Here we go. I'm actually gonna remember that paper from earlier? I'm gonna test my colors on this before I go, just so I can see how how vibrant these are, right? First, you like my shadow. And then you just kind of wash and pull it all over. At least that's how I'm going to do it.
first run with that. I'm gonna layer it. I'm gonna come back with some other colors, but I'm gonna wait for it to dry. All right, so clean my little brush pen. And then now, I think I'm gonna do this cop in red. And maybe some, uh, maybe this brown. The sienna right here. I wanna see what it looks like. Oh yeah. That's dry blood right there. Bruh. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. There we go. I might mix these two. That way I don't get such a pink. Yeah, here we go. So now I finished the uh, the cup in the middle, right? I gave it some base. You saw right here, a uh, little base coat. Um, you saw right here. I need to go over it. I kind of want to uh, put some shadows into it, kind of round it out more. But it's a little wet, so I'm gonna let that sit. I'm thinking by the time I pass through this one time, uh, two window should be dry enough to work with. Probably is right now. But for sure, next will be my uh, cop right after this. So I'm going to hit this kind of neutral, right, because the red kind of draws your eye towards the middle. So I think I'm just going to make this little steel colored with some uh, grays and blues. I got my base coat down for everything. Uh, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit before I start working from top. That way my, my forearms right here don't touch this stuff. And I'm gonna work for it from top to bottom again. I think actually I'm gonna fill out my little publishing logo up here.
this a little break, let it dry for a bit. Just waiting for these bits to dry. And I'll get back to it. So I let it dry a little bit, dry to a touch. You see my paper bowed a little bit. Just gonna do that. You can shape it up. I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. And uh, I'm gonna go now and I got my base coat down, so I'm gonna go and put some color highlights, make it pop where I want it to pop, start filling in some of this 3D that's going on right here, and uh, just finish it really. So check it out. Let's see, let's see what we see what we end up with. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. So I just rounded it out a little bit, put some darker colors on this, on the base of whatever color we were working with. I'm going to try to put some highlights with this white pigment here. Sometimes this is hit or miss with the, the watercolor kits. I find it's easier to just kind of leave that space blank if you're working on white paper. This is the whites generally used more, I find. It makes This is more effective for the blending. But I'm kind of curious. I'm gonna try it out. I would suggest you guys try it out too. Do some uh, experimenting. So let's see. I'm gonna try not to dilute it so much. Get as much pigment on there as I can. There we go. I'm happy with my letters. Let's start filling in the rest of this background, uh, this 3D part, and then we will come back over it with our brush, finish some details. Also, a little thing too, I do sometimes if I'm really, you know, trying hard to get that white and I didn't block out the negative space for it. Um, you know, if you have like a white pen, the one I recommend is like a jelly roll, simple jelly roll. You know, if you want to mix medias. Well, you know, if you want to be a purist, you don't have to do that. Leave your blank spaces or go over it with white pigment. But that's a little, uh, that's a little trick I use. So I'm going to keep the background, I'm going to keep it really black. So I'm going to do two tones, right? Everything that's sitting on the bottom right here, or facing the bottom, these planes, I'm going to color um, uh, grayish. And everything else will be black. You'll see more so what I mean, but... Uh, I'm really trying to let these colors pop, right? So I'm gonna surround it and let it sit on some black. So I mix a little bit of that white pigment, like I was telling you earlier, that's, I find that's primarily used to just kinda put like a pastel wash over your colors, you know, mute your colors a little bit. 
So that's what I did right here with this gray, right? Instead of trying to mix it down with water, I just put some white into it. And I'll get some gray, some very light gray. There we go, I like that shade. I like that shade, there we go. What we do here is go back, 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 back. that part of that now I'm gonna cap this I get to use my favorite brush so I want the pretty white wash on everything so as you saw me just do that that's already dry so now I get to go over it with black and I'll highlight some stuff on the way you know what yeah, I'm gonna have a little juice on this a little color, color on the bone. All right, so make sure my, my brush is flowing right. See, it's a little dry at first, see that? So I'm just gonna make sure I'm getting solid lines. There we go. There you go, that's what I like. Actually, since I have some big blobs to color in, I can give it a little squeeze and saturate it. There we go. It's about the flow I like. See that? Steady. There we go. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Alright. So, I don't need my practice sheet anymore. I'm going to put it aside. So, here we go.
filled most of it in. I noticed I made a, I skipped a couple spots with the gray right here. All right, I got most uh, all my black in. I really like using that pen, so I try to find an excuse to use it whenever I can, as often as I can. I'm looking at it right now. There's some few details I thought about as I was going through. Like uh, you see, kind of right here, how the edge of this two kind of goes with the curvature, and same thing with this one right here. It's not necessarily, you know, I'm thinking about a plane right here where it's side bottom. You know, these kind of diagonal shapes. You know, where do they fit in? So I just had to make a judgment call. But I think what I want to try to see is I like the way the white looked on the super high pigmented red parts. So I'm going to try to give that, I want to see what this white looks like on top of it. Let's see if it's, uh, if I won't drag too much of this black with it. Let's see. go I put some highlights in I like the way that white looks over that black it helped me define a couple things what else? and I actually used it to add a little bit of details so I'm almost done I kind of want to fill up this space see what it goes something see what I can put there see if something goes there or right now I just thought of an excuse to use this brush pen again I'm just gonna kind of go over it and make these little lines a little heavier and I want you to be mindful too when you're thinking about this, like you, you I'm right handed so I kind of went, you know, like a typewriter, right? So, cause you don't want to be dragging your hand all over the place, you know, be mindful, just, you know, hey, if you're going to work right here, if you decide to wet this with your watercolor first, you know, you're going to have to let that dry because your hand's going to be sitting on top of it. Uh, you know, also you saw how dirty my hand got from the penciling earlier, you know, you could wear a glove or put something down. So you're not directly on the paper, but just be mindful of that. That way you're not all over the place because you know, you're really going to be upset with yourself if you find a little, you know, black splotch over there that was not supposed to be there. Or, you know, you'll have to come up with some sort of creative solution. But if you kind of have a system in mind while you're working it, then you won't have to do either of those things.
so there we go. Oh, yeah! This is my cover. You see what I did after I put in my white. I just went around and kind of, you know, I decided I, I wanted to fill this up with something uh, to keep it simple. You know, maybe even if I wanted to, I'm thinking this could be washed another color, right? Maybe something else. Hmm, I'm wondering. You can get like a brown tint around the edges. That might be kind of cool. So, you know, again, just to kind of summarize, when you're working with this, uh, these watercolors, you know, you're gonna work it the same way. Go through with your pencil, go through with your pen, right? Your bigger pen, you know, you're gonna have two sizes. Your bigger pen, just kind of map out everything, right? Mm, at that point, you're gonna wanna go over, clean all your your pencil marks because once you start putting color on there you can't get to those pencil marks anymore and they're gonna they're gonna be there right you're trying to go for something super 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 clean then you saw me go in and fill in my bigger blacker areas All right I went in and did more highlights with this stuff with the white uh, I made some I added uh, another color the same color of the base just to kind of separate it like this is the same red and brown mixture right but just because it's set on top on another already layer of pigment it just pops a little bit more right so you don't have to get too crazy with your color mixings if you don't want to but if you do you're gonna have to work with that technique right layering and layering and layering and yeah that'll give you a chance to sit back and see really where you're at if you wanted to add stuff you know I decided I did um, so I put the white with the black just because you know that black seemed too heavy and then once I saw the white lines with the black lines I was like well now that kind of makes my gray area look a little flat so I just kind of inverted what I did and put those black lines on the gray area and filled it up a little bit and um, I'm real happy with the way it came out and it took a while like just imagine this is pretty simple this is this is a pretty simple design right it's just letters but you know working the process it takes a while so just be mindful set yourself some time to really focus and and dedicate yourself to you know whatever your whatever project you're working on you don't want to you know if i had stopped right here on my on my r you know it was just a mixing of gray and black or if it was something more complicated and i stepped away from that you know i'd have to come back and figure that out and my pigment would be all would all be dried up so, you know, just be mindful of your stopping points. Like I said, work a plan, you know, have a system going into it that you want to, you know, it doesn't, don't take the fun out of it and overthink it, but just, you know, just have a game plan. And there you go. That's my cover. Maybe I'll work on the variant. For right now, here's my, uh, here's my 2 and 0 Cop Stories cover. Hope you guys like it.